This chair is filled with celebrities today. Yes. Right. right. We're nope. in the midst of an idol. Surely. House I know. Sparks, Thank everybody. You. Hi, Sparks. How are you? Give it up for House Sparks. <sighs> Unbelievable. Now you are. I got to be honest with you. I, mm -hmm. You know, I grew up. I talk soup was one of my favorite shows. You were one of the funny. I, I think you still are the funniest host of that show ever. I think so. You. I, and I, I, I think you will agree with me. Yes. I would agree with you. And what and, was that uh, experience like? Um, it was. Uh, it was a combination of a, a tooth pull and the biggest joy you can run into. <laughs> um, because I was working for the people who worked who ran E at the time were a bit crazy mm -hmm. and really uh, believed their own hype uh, and and. I mean, it's bad. Studio system is bad. There are people who are do nothing good to make a movie get finished or get a TV show uh, to a, a level of quality. They just have a job there, and they're just kind of a doorway. You have to get through them to do it. And they are very inflated in what they think of as their own level of importance. Isn't that funny? N nothing is worse than that plus we're the doorway for all entertainment. So every... You know, celebrity has to come through and kiss their butt on E News Daily or whatever. Or, you know, any show, CNN Showbiz Tonight, any of those stuff. Very, those people think they're very important because <laughs> celebrities have to talk to us. <laughs> and uh, and they're much better now. It's a much better group now. But at the time, it was a bit rough dealing with that because it was my first in foray into yeah. fame at all. It was. I mean, I literally the weekend I got the job. I went down to Third Street Promenade, which is an outdoor mall in Los Angeles, and walked around knowing full well that. The next time I went down there, I would not be an obscure comedian nobody knew. And the next weekend I walked down there, I turned the corner, didn't even get to step out onto the actual promenade, and a guy smacked me in the chest with his open hand like that and went, hey, talk suit guy. Okay. Isn't that? It's, yeah, it's I mean, amazing. it was a huge shift. And so uh, the best part about it was being able to be on TV being funny every day because I don't think there's a bigger gift I can give. Right. I, I, uh, I feel, you know, yeah, the things absolutely. you can do. If I can make people laugh every single day, um, and it doesn't require nudity or jail time, um, see, gotcha, um, then, you know, my job is done here. I must move along. Well, I have to be honest, look, because I'm the morning meteorologist here at the station, and, you know, Carol hosted the show this morning. She's yes. my audience. Right. And you She had appreciates the, you in a way that other well, people no, do but, not. No, you had the gift of mm. going to talk you went off camera, you broke the thing, and you sure. were like talking to the people behind the cameras yeah. and incorporating them into your show. They became a part of your show. Yeah, the fourth and fifth wall, as Ex it were. Yeah. Exactly, right. which I, I have not mm -hmm. seen done a lot on television. And well, I, now and it's I, almost like a habitual thing. Now like it is. Tosh.0 oh and right. all those kind of things. Yeah, that became the norm. But like, it was, it, you couldn't help it. With Talk Soup, the truth was, we're, uh, that show actually, Greg Kinnear was the first host, and he got fired twice for making jokes because it was supposed to be a straight entertainment show. Just read the news. Just a guy, show the clips from the talk shows that day, don't really comment, tell who the guests are tomorrow, and we'll move on. It was and, like, you know, and, and there were just times when you come back from clips of those shows and you're going, I want to say. And it's so unnatural. I mean, <laughs> yeah, love it. It's so unnatural I not have, to react. I have to say something. Right. These people do not deserve to be oh, on television, no, and they're a danger to your eyeballs. It's and then he got fired for that. And then it became the show. He's really credited in many ways for shifting the entire worth of the show to being a social commentary show. And while I was hosting it, Steve Martin actually said, Irony in American television begins and ends on talk soup. Like he thought we were the be all end all I, I, of I ironic to, television, yeah. which he was sort of right. Um, and nobody in the show, a lot of the writers didn't know whether that was a compliment or not. And I'm like, well, that's ironic. That, <laughs> but did you grow up knowing, because I heard that you were also, like, you, you know, you have uh, a superlative of being the youngest ever game show host. I mean, I know that show didn't yeah, last long, but I mean, did you just grow up knowing that this was what your calling was to do? No, I, you know, I, I grew up in Kentucky in Peaks Mill, Kentucky, and I went to the movies a lot. We didn't have a TV till I was 15. So I, I, I kind of watched the entertainment world from a super distance. And comedians especially, I, my dad, he was a bluegrass musician, he used to repair instruments. And this, he repaired a couple of mandolins for this guy and the guy couldn't pay him. So he was like, I tell you what, I'll give you two crates of records for, in exchange for the work he did. And a quarter of one of the crates, which was like 40 albums, was all comedy records. Oh, wow. And so as a kid, I was eight, nine years old, listening to Lenny Bruce and Godfrey Cambridge and Richard Pryor and, right. and Shelley Berman and, and Jonathan Winters and all these people. And I, at that age and in that place, I didn't know that was a job. I just would hear, hear a comedy album. To me, it was like a album of bird song. Like mm -hmm. somebody just happened to tape this guy in a room full of people tell, telling jokes. Right. I never realized you could make a living at it. And then I moved to Chicago um, went to, uh, when I went to high school, 
And uh, because, I mean, they, they don't really do high school in Kentucky. They just kind of <laughs> redo elementary school and pretend. Can we just reteach you the stuff you were learning before? I think he was on the list of the, the bottom five. But without creationism. Yeah, yeah, right. And so I moved there. And, and Chicago takes all the mystery out of entertainment. It's a blue-collar job. There's no discovering you. Right. There's no you're sitting on a park bench and someone goes, you could be on television, right. kid. That's crap. That's not how it works and not how it right. should work. Right. They just go, you start at the bottom and you perform until you've got a skill and then you work your way up. And that was like, okay, I can do that. That's a job. We have, we're going to like run out of time, but we, wanna, we can see you in Trumbull tonight and Mohegan Sun tomorrow yeah. night. Absolutely. Go yeah. check them out. Hal Sparks, great. Very quick, we have 30 seconds. Yes. P Queer as folk. Yes. Help or hurt your career? It was a, uh, I think career-wise, professionally, it was a cul-de-sac. Okay. But uh, artistically, it was you were one of the beyond first. valuable. Okay, good. I'm it was, glad to it, hear that. Yeah, and it, and it had social and political worth beyond its existence exactly. on television, which is the purpose of doing it. Well, I'm, I'm very happy you did that. Me too. It helped me a lot, Absolutely. so I appreciate that. How Sparks. Purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for House yeah. Sparks. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Go, Go see you tonight. Out. Tomorrow night, all the info better. We'll see you. Goodbye. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the summer heat. Yeah. Bye,